second sessions. Okay, okay. So apologies, I we forgot. I forgot to start. I mean, resume the recording. Uh, so let's try to solve another problem. Okay. So I'm gonna create a new file, new part file. Okay. Again, I'm gonna explain all the steps as as I go, and let's select a problem from our sketches. Okay. So I'm gonna leave this one. This one uh, will have a lot of work to do. Uh, not because of that, but you, you guys can practice from this one. So this looks easy, but we are gonna take a different route, okay? So that we are using some of the tools. Again, first select one of the planes that you wanna work with, okay? And click the sketch button. Now you have it. On the I one, I'm gonna just get the origin option here, okay? Now. Uh, when you start working on a problem similar to this, the where you see the objects that you were trying to create are symmetric. Basically, if you have, you can just divide it into half, and it will basically mirror opposite of one another. Uh, always work on one of the sides. Okay, that way uh, you will have a leverage of just copying or mirroring it to the other side, that, uh, and you don't have to do a lot of work. So. I'm going to do the same thing. And first of all, what I'm going to do is start working with some construction line. This is my favorite thing to use uh, whenever I'm working in any of the design things. So I'm just clicking on this upside down triangle and selecting the center line, which is basically the construction line. Okay. And then I'm going to select this one, which is a midpoint line. Okay. Now, if I select this and on the keyboard, I'm pressing the shift button, okay? So it will try to keep it as vertical as possible when I'm just moving it, okay? If you think that it's not, all you can always do is select that one and click this vertical button, it will do the same thing for you, okay? Uh, similarly, I'm gonna recreate the same thing again, okay? Uh, and, but this time I'm gonna create uh, the horizontal line, okay? So we have this construction of center lines for us, right? Uh, we will start working with this semicircle, but now it will be a quarter circle, right? So let's start with that. And we'll not be working on the circle until we create the whole thing. Okay, so let's start with the center point arc. Okay, again, three points, center point, start point, and end point, right? Sounds good. Now we know that this one will have a radius of 20. So we will be using this smart dimension tool, uh, selecting it and just making it, hey, okay, this is gonna be 20. Again, I'm working with the millimeter scale here. Okay, the next step is we have a vertical line, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, vertical, and horizontal, where it is just ending around some, somewhere along this line, okay? So I'm just gonna roughly draw it. And about the shape we have, okay? Not worrying about any of the dimensions. And then just look into this smart dimension, okay? We know the height from this center line to this point is 20. So the first thing we're gonna select this and this line here and make it 20. Okay, great. Now this vertical line we have here is 10. Oops, so you see the previously we had this line selected and with respect to this, this is 90 degrees. So the smart tool is showing us, okay, this is 90 degree. What we can do just we click the escape button only once, only once, and you will see now it will just come back to the secondary selection we did, which was as a line. So. You don't have to do a reselection every time. You can just always um, get into the same order you have selected. So I'm doing that and setting the number as 10, okay? Uh, this height here, smaller one is five. So I'm just gonna do it right away. Makes it easy to handle. Okay, so now if you look carefully, this width here we have is from this uh, vertical to this vertical is 80. So that means when we're halfing it with this center line, that is from the center line to one corner will be 40. 
Same goes for the bottom one from one edge to the another. It's 100. If we're halving it with the center line, that make, will make it 50, right? So first, we're going to select this center line here. And next, we're going to select this, oops, this portion here. So now it shows as 41 or something. Uh, we're going to make it 40 as, as we've calculated. And again, we're going to select this line with respect to this. And we know it's going to be 50. OK. So we have perfectly created one part or one side of this sketch that we wanted to create. Now, now it's time to mirror it. And if you notice carefully, see every of the line is black now. That means it is fully defined. So makes our life easier. So now what we can do is go into the mirror entities. We have this here, right? And the first thing you will see on the left uh, property manager is entities to mirror and mirror about. So the mirror about is the axis that you will use as a reference, which is basically your mirror. So uh, the construction line created will work as the mirror for this case, okay? And the entities to mirror, we can always select the lines we wanna copy there. Right. So as you can see, as I'm selecting, the yellow lines appearing there, showing us which lines we are copying there. So once you have done selecting it, click OK, and you will have your drawing. The only thing that's left is the circle that I haven't created. And you can just add it later on with a diameter of 20, right? So on this one, I mean, at the first one, we learned uh, and practiced how to use the different um, line tools we had, right? And on this one, we have learned uh, how to use the, the mirror tool, some of the editing features also. Now, I think I missed one, mentioning a few things. So let's go. So once you have done, you know, every time when you're working with SOLIDWORKS or any design tool, once you're done, remember to exit the sketch, okay? So that you, now once you do so, you will not be able to edit it unless you get back in. To do that, you basically need to select the sketch you wanna work with, right click on it and edit sketch. You need to click this one, okay? Otherwise you'll not be working on it. Um, it's a good practice. So if you're working with multiple, uh, uh, geometries, planes, and later on, you'll find it pretty helpful. So before we move on to our next practice, um, is there any questions or do you want me to show you guys anything in particular? I had a question. When you did the mirror entities, what did you mm -hmm. click after? I know you clicked up there at the very top, like the mirror entities, but then what did you do after again? Okay, yeah, uh, let's go through the steps again. It's, it's gonna be pretty straightforward. Okay, I'm just going to delete everything, retrace back all my steps. Okay, so we were here, right? We click the mirror entities. Okay, the first box here is the mirror about and select this axis about which you want to uh, create your mirror. Basically, this is your mirror here. Then we need to select this entities to mirror, basically, which ones you want to copy on the other side. Okay, just select all the lines that you want to copy and just click OK here. And then you will have your mirrored entities. Does it answer your question? Yes, thank you. OK, and let's finish this diagram. We should have a 20 here. OK, so no other questions for this one or any specific tool that you want to learn before we move on to the next one. Okay, so the next few ones are pretty straightforward also. Uh, so I'm just gonna do this one. Um, this one is fun to do. And there are quite a few tools that you can learn from this one. So let me create a new file. Okay, again, let's start with the front plane. We're gonna create a new sketch. Okay, uh, my favorite part creating the center point and the center lines. Okay. And on this problem, we will be needing the center lines a lot uh, to make our lives easier. 
So we select the upside down triangle of this line and select the center line. Okay. Uh, by the way, if I'm going a little too fast, please stop me and ask questions. Okay. Now uh, I'm going to select this, which is the midpoint line again, similar. Pressing the shift button on my computer, I mean keyboard, I'm going to create the vertical line. And then the, oops, my bad. The same thing, midpoint line and create the horizontal line. Okay. Oops, what happened? Selecting for itself. Okay. Okay, great. Now we have these things ready. So once you have this, as you can see, this sketch uses a few things. So we have a mirrored plane. Of course, we can, if we can create one part, mirroring it is, a, is one solution. But can we make it more easier? Is there any other technique? If you notice carefully, this pattern is basically repeated a second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time, and sixth time. The only thing is it is missing in between here and here. So if by any way we can create one of these patterns and cop make it eight copy eight times around because it's 45 degrees. So we can just easily create eight times of it. And then we somehow delete two of these might make our life easier. So let's give it a shot, okay? So we will start with basically this outer diameter, which we will be using for one of those center creations, okay? So let's start with the circle, the outer circle itself, okay? Which is, it seems like is a diameter of 120. Okay, so we're gonna create a, a diameter of 120. Okay, now this is a solid line. Now uh, what we need is a construction line. So what we're gonna do is select the circle and select this call for construction. Okay, so now it's a construction line, straightforward. The next thing we're gonna do is again, select the center line and we want, uh, wanna know where this 45 degree exists from this one of these lines. So what I'm gonna do is from the center, I'm just create, gonna create any line then go into the smart dimension tool, select line number one, which is, as you see, it's black. So that means it's not gonna move what, no matter what we're gonna, I'm gonna do. And this is blue. So that's, this one's critically movable. So I'm gonna select the second line and create the angle between them, which is 45, okay? So now we have a lot of information within this. We already have the information of this location of this circle. From in, with respect to this space, right? So now what we're gonna do is select this circle, right? We have to draw a lot of circles now. So we're gonna create this circle and this circle, the innermost and the middlemost, okay? So let's draw two circles, okay? Let's go to the smart dimension. We know the innermost has a diameter of 60 and the uh, middle one has a radius of 40. Okay, so let's select the middle one, uh, smaller one, and let's make diameter as 60. Okay, now the middle one has a radius of 40. That means a diameter of 80, okay? If you wanna, wanna do it directly 80, or you can just type 40 times two, okay? And now we want to draw a last circle, which is this one, the smaller one we have. have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the first one. And the inner one has a diameter of 10. Okay, so smart dimension again, we're going to create, make it as 10. Okay, pretty straightforward. Now it's the semicircle. Okay, the semicircle has a radius of 10. So again, the same tool, center point arc from the center, oops, from the center, we're gonna create is, come on, yeah. Okay, and this smart dimension will say that, okay, this one has a radius of 10. Okay, so far so good. 
so far so good our main goal is creating one of these patterns first and then go from there okay now we need to draw a line which is perpendicular from this point to this uh, mid middle circle right so what we can do is start from this you know just draw at random you don't need to worry about any uh, where it's starting or ending okay i'm just i'm just drawing those things now the, the, like i said it's going to be perpendicular from the semicircle to this one of course we can add relations to it so we're going to select the semicircle select this line here right and select this some option called tangent so now it's gonna make it tangent so basically it's going perpendicularly straight we're going to do the same thing for the other side and make it tangent now we have something already ready but it seems a little weird another option that you can work with i mean uh, which is uh, I'm assuming um, uh, if you don't want to make it uh, perpendicular to this is we already have this center line, right? Select the other other uh, lines with it and make it parallel to one another. Okay, so that way it will look a little good, I will say. Okay, either way you will get what you're looking for. Now, if you notice carefully, we have completed one of the parts, six more to go. Are we going to create those manually? Of course not. So what we're going to do is select this upside down triangle, okay, where we have this linear sketch pattern, and we're going to select this thing called circular sketch pattern. Okay, so now on the left side, we will have everything that we need. Okay, the first box here is asking for you, where is the center around which we are we're going to revolve. So this is the center around which we're going to revolve. So we're going to select this. Okay, now just go into the bottom here and it's asking uh, which ones we want to copy. So I'm going to copy this line here, this line here, this line here, and this circle here. Okay, we need six of those copies. So if you select them as six, you will see, okay, it doesn't add up. Let's go with two more. If we do the eight, we have, we do, uh, they do add up. The problem is we have two more extras, which we don't have on the original one, the bottom on the top, right? So in sketch patterns, you can actually skip some of the instances that you have there by selecting this option at the bottom, which is called instances to skip. Select this, select this box here. You will see at one point, corner or point, you will see this um, pink color bubbles, okay? So if you select those pink color bubbles, it is basically saying that, okay, yeah, remove those. I, we don't need these things. So I did the same thing. And now I know that those are the two options that will be removed and just click okay. Now you have everything that you need for this. The only thing left is removing in between sections. Of course, we know what to do. The tool is called trim ent entities, okay? Uh, we're going with the power trim, which is most easy to use. And we're just going to select these lines that we don't need. And oops, oops, oops. I think a little went a little overboard. What else happening? Okay. And there you go. You have your final version of it. So we didn't mirror it, but we created a circular pattern out of the whole thing, okay? So the reason we also went through this is that we can create the same thing in two different ways. Um, and if you look carefully into your tools, what you have on your arsenal, uh, just you can always find a clever way of solving or dealing with this kind of things, okay? So any questions, anything you need to me to show you again, Okay, um, I'm assuming there is nothing. Uh, if there is no question, I will ask you guys to you know start practicing the ones I showed you. See if you can complete it yourself. If not, uh, we can. I can show you some, those steps again, and uh, you can also practice the other ones that I haven't showed here. Uh, 
Um, you already know how to use the tools from the tutorials. Practice them and let me know. Uh, we'll be here. Max is also here. Okay. Uh, so Adrian has a question for uh, for the instances to skip. Okay. So I'm gonna do uh, show how to skip the instances in a different way. Okay. Let's create a different file, which is not as messy as this. So let's say you have something like this. Okay, I'm um, making this as construction. Okay, and you want to create um, the same circular pattern. So the list of circular pattern. We know the center is this. We know this is the entity. And let's say we are equal we, with equal distance. We want to create eight copies of it. And you decided, okay, to remove some of these, right? For that, what you can do is go into this box here called instances to skip. Select this box here. You will see that here you will have a few pink boxes here, right? So when you're selecting this box, select these pink boxes. For those you want to remove, okay? You don't want to make a copy of it. And just by selecting them, you're just basically removing them, okay? Something along this line. And this one works for a number of things. So I'm just showing you another example. Um, let's say we have something like this here. Let's say we have something here. I'm making things up. Okay, so the linear sketch pattern. Okay, so I'm selecting this x axis here by default. And for entities to pattern, I'm just selecting this. Okay. Uh, you said that, let's say that we, they are going to be 50 millimeters apart and you want to have six different copies of it. But you want to remove two, one of them from the middle. Same thing, select the instances to skip, select the box, these pink boxes will appear. The ones you want to delete, just click on them and it will get removed. Once done, click OK and you will have patterns around that. Any questions? Okay. If you think you are unable to do it, uh, don't worry. Um, we are recording this session, so we'll be uploading it also on the Blackboard. So you can just you know come back again and see it again. And as it's saved as a YouTube link, so you can always uh, just come back to the whole thing. Okay. Um, anything else? that we can help you guys. So we'll be here till eight again. Uh, so uh, my advice is, you know, use this time, practice the other problems. If you stuck with something or one of the tools that you don't know how to use those, I'm here to help, okay? So I'll be stopping the recording. Uh, if there is a question, then I'll start resuming. Uh, I will resume the recording again, and then we can just talk from there, okay? Okay, everyone, thank you for attending today's session. Uh, let's meet next week. Um, on Monday, we'll be posting the tutorials. Uh, Tuesday, we will do some practices. And, Sorry, I don't understand. And Thursday, we will have uh, an open office hour. So if you have pro having problems with any of the things we're posting next week, we can just meet on Thursday for that one. Tuesday, again, like I said, we'll be covering some practices like today. Okay. Um, you know, have a good day. Um, and with that, let's adjourn today's meeting. All right. See you next week. See you next week. Bye.